Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Pure True King deck by a popular demand, actually. A lot of people have actually requested this and emailed me about it, messaged me through Facebook about it, stuff like that. Uh, because I've been playing the True King Yang Zing variant, which I'm actually a really big fan of, they uh, wanted me to actually play the Pure True King deck and give my thoughts on it and give what... Uh, some input on what I think the deck needs or anything like that. Basically, my thoughts on the deck itself. And ultimately, through the little bit I've playtested of it, I'm not too big of a fan of it because it just seems like it's way too slow and it, like really clunky and has some consistency problems. But those just might be my own like like just preconceived misconceptions and preconceived judgments against the deck. Uh, whereas the deck might actually function very nice and smooth. Uh, I don't know. It's just it takes some. It's gonna take some testing before I even like come to a conclusion on that, which I'm gonna be doing between now and when I actually play games for the video. I'm gonna do a couple of test games and then I'm going to film for the video. So there's gonna be a little bit of a break. So if my ideals change between now and then, of being you know kind of hopeful about this deck to just straight up just not liking it, then you'll understand why. But Otherwise, basically, I don't want to waste too much time in this portion of the video. I think we're just going to jump straight into the uh, first game because it's very clear-cut and very straightforward how this deck operates. It's definitely not anywhere near as complex a beast as like the Cosmo or Yang Zing hybrids are. And the Cosmo hybrid is definitely another one that I plan on possibly playing and, uh, and testing out for the future. But that one is another really complex deck, just like the Yang Zing version, which I need to basically learn a bit more about before I actually go too deep into it and start making videos on it because I mean hell I made one video with the Yang Zing version and I basically hadn't touched the deck in a week and I was like fumbling over my plays even though I was making decent plays I was fumbling over them and I knew they weren't the correct plays and the best they could be but anyway let's not waste any more time let's just jump straight into the first game see how long my voice holds out and see how long my faith in this deck actually uh, persists between now and when I actually film the games let's just jump straight in all right. It should be noted that I have not set up my Discord server or my um, or my Patreon thing yet because I just I haven't messed with those kind of things before, so I've just I haven't figured out what I want to do for it. But essentially, um, this is actually kind of all right, I guess, in terms of a play. Um, I can do this, and that will get me access into two of these. Yeah, no, that's not what I want though, per se. Um, but I could add, let's see, I could add True Draco Succession, um, or, uh, or whatever. And I could, uh, Normal Summon that. Oh, let's see, I, I probably just want this. <coughs> but I want the Skill Drain, too. I want the Skill Drain to be live. Uh, so, what we do is, okay, this is what we do. We add, we add the Earth. Where is it? We add the Earth and the Fire. And that way the Earth can bring back this. Uh, I could have added Water, as well. Um, but that would have that could have summoned magma dragon from deck and summoned another one But eh, it's this it seems like the same result with less uh, kerfuffle uh, less messing around But so I think I just lost rock paper scissors and he told me to go first So I'm not sure what exactly is going on here <clears throat> in terms of uh, in terms of things that are happening But so I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna set this dimension barrier and I'm going to pass turn, and I'm just going to immediately use VFD to call, like, light or something bullshit like that. Uh, just because that seems to be the, uh, that seems to be fine. Just, I mean, it literally doesn't matter what you call, because your opponent's monsters become that. But I haven't set up, going back to the original point that I was starting this game with, was that I haven't set up this court server yet, so I am still playing its randoms. Um, so I have no idea how any of this is going to go. Uh, because I, I can't really play against friends right now because they're relatively unreliable in terms of uh, how they're trying to uh, make things happen. Set three, question mark. Uh, my voice is starting to fail again, unfortunately. <clears throat> but I can at least keep it together for, uh, for this bit of the video. Ah, Antique Gear uh, Hunting Hound, or Ancient Gear Hunting Hound. So we're playing against an Ancient Gear deck again. Um, now, I, my expectations of this deck are rather low, <laughs> as, I've, uh, as I've made clear. I mean, it couldn't beat the BES deck, and I think that deck is cool, but nowhere near anything meta-defining. Um, so, uh, like, I mean, there's that. But uh, this lets me destroy other cards um, in my hand or field. So I can get rid of this duplicate dimension barrier, 
and I could just uh, I could just add a uh, a card that would get me uh, I could add true or I could add disciples of the Draco Phoenix. That will be what I want. <clears throat> that indeed will be what I want. Ojama Trio. Huh. Um. So you're playing Ancient Gear Burn? Maybe. Um. I'm gonna. I could have destroyed one of the tokens. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No more messing around. All right. I want, uh, I want the uh, Disciples of the Draco Phoenix. I want this because I want to shuffle those three cards back and draw a card. Uh, because I want to start cycling. And uh, because that's the biggest problem I have with this deck versus the Yang Zing and hell, even the Cosmo build, is that it doesn't cycle that well. The pure build just seems very, like, brutish. And it doesn't do what it needs to do, like, well. Um, that's my biggest issue with it. But I'm going to activate this. And I'm going to call Fire. Because I can then use this uh, to... I mean, I've got the Dimension Barrier that I can use to call Fusion at any given time. I'm not worried in any way, shape, or form about the fact that, uh, that this has no materials on it anymore. I'm not worried at all. Solemn Strike. That kind of sucks. Um, now, this doesn't give me the normal summon effect. And I can't normal summon this? What? Is there something I'm missing? I didn't normal summon this turn. What? Why? Daddy, why? Daddy, no. Um, but so I'm just gonna set this in pass. I. <laughs> shit. I'm gonna pop off these Ojama tokens and I'm going to enjoy every second of it. I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy popping these off for my true kings. Now, what I'm gonna end up doing is, uh, is I'm going to use this next turn to either pop this out of my hand, pop one of the tokens, or, depending, uh, I might pop the Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix. Just because. It seems like it'd be pretty strong. But I'm holding down A like a champion right now. Because I'm just holding it down to maintain my ability to activate Dimension Barrier in response to uh, some, like, dumb bullshit. Uh, but from here, he's activating Gold Gadget's effect, and I'll just go ahead and Skill Drain. I don't even care. You know? I'll summon bigger things than you, and I'll just let that be what decides this game. I'll just out-resource you through the fact that I can search removal with the field spell. Uh, but that's the thing, is that this deck, as an engine, or the True Kings as an engine with all your big guys in the field spell, works really, really well with other, like, with other archetypes, like Cosmo, like, like, Yang Zing and all that. Like, you have so much better options in terms of things you can play with the deck that I find it incredibly strange that, uh, that this pure build is as popular as it is um, with people considering the fact that it just kind of doesn't do a lot. I mean, kind of doesn't do a lot is a bit of an understatement. It actually just really doesn't do a lot. Um, and that's the biggest issue that I have with the deck as a whole, is that it doesn't do much. <laughs> it just doesn't do much. That's my biggest complaint, is that you take some of the coolest things that this, uh, this archetype's capable of doing, um, being splashed with other stuff like this is basically literally just better fire king island because you're searching actually real cards Cards that can summon themselves cards that are huge in the form of like the like the Yang Zing and the Cosmo variants, but ultimately It just people just aren't utilizing that and they don't seem to want to utilize it, which I find Incredibly strange as I have already established, but so I'm gonna pop this and I'm going to use it to search for Water Search for water, uh, because I can search for water, then this thing's effect will activate, allowing me to search for uh, uh, Magma Dragon, just to get it out of my deck, or I could search for the Fire one and start adding stuff back to my hand, so I will search for another copy of the Fire one, um, because I can just pop the water and the fire out of my hand, and then that would uh, that would do that. I'm actually going to use this to, uh, to shuffle these back immediately, uh, just because I want to get access to the draw first. Really? Another terraforming? Well, swell. Looky here. <clears throat> Looky here, Dueler Mans. Um, so I get to activate this now. I can use this to pop this last Ojama token. And, uh, and then off of this, I'll be able to access, um, I'll be able to access just more cards. And so what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll access, uh, True Draco Succession? Yeah, maybe? Um, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be too worthwhile. Uh, because of the fact that I'm just gonna be summoning this, and then I can pop it. Yeah, maybe, but, eh. Doesn't seem worth. 
Um, I could definitely add the trap, though, and that would let me start playing the skill drain game to the best of my capabilities. And so uh, that's what we'll do. But so from here, we'll pop these two, summon this in attack mode, then we'll use both of these things' effects. I'll add the water one back to hand, and then summon probably the earth one out of deck, um, just because it seems to be uh, seems to be pretty clear cut. Uh, or I could summon this one because this one has the other like strongest attack value, so seems worth. Because then if this one dies by card effect, I could just do uh, I could just do stuff like that um, to benefit me. But I can't shuffle back field spells, which is a bit unfortunate. But I can set this card, and so we'll use this to attack his uh, his ancient gear uh, hunting hound because this will just die. And then I'm very much in like a dominating position because I'm playing skill drain like this. Like I said, this deck just seems to take everything that's amazing about how splashable this engine is. Well, I shouldn't say splashable, but I mean it really is. Like, it works with almost everything. But it is a lot of cards, <laughs> if we're being completely real. It is literally 3 field spell, 3 terraforming, and then 12 monsters. It is 18 cards. <laughs> it's an 18 card, splashable, air quotes, engine. But, uh... But because of how splashable it is, you can use it in other decks that have other engines that are also, you know, about that sizable. Like I said, you can just play the like, fi like you can play the Fire King Cosmos strategy, slimming down on the engine of what you were playing. Of uh, just like you can just play different things. Of uh, just like cutting, uh, cutting certain ones of the uh, of the True Kings. Like you could, you don't have to play full play sets of each. You could play two of each. You could slim the engine down by a lot. You could completely omit the fire. Uh, fire true king because you can just use the uh, the wind the water and the um, and the earth like there's plenty of different capabilities you have access to in terms of how you can play the deck and keep it moving that's definitely not a problem in any form or capacity but what you do run risk of is you run risk of just not doing anything and uh, in the pure build like that's that's just the biggest thing I'm having a problem with is that just I'm just not doing a lot of anything <laughs> Um, and that's something that I really, really dislike, is when I'm not doing anything, um, other than just being a buster, and just sitting back on my multiple copies of, like, multiple good cards, um, which, I mean, shouldn't be considered a buster thing to do, but I mean, it really just kind of is, uh, but I could summon this by hitting these two, I could summon, yeah, I can summon the Magma Dragon from deck, but it won't get any effect, so I might as well just get this out of deck and pop it off. Just so I don't risk drawing the bitch. There's uh, there's multiple different things that are uh, that are beneficial for me to just do this. I just put big beefy things on board and uh, and keep going. Just keep my keep my field spell and my um, and my pot of average just circulating. Like really, that's all all we have to do over and over again is just keep this uh, just keep this circulating. That's all that needs to happen. Uh, but so there are one two. There are only two. Uh, so I could activate this. I could normal summon one of these guys. I could normal summon over this. But this goes to attack mode, so I really don't think that's uh, that's too worthwhile. <coughs> but I could. <coughs> I could do just that. Uh, this summons it in defense mode, right? Yeah, defense position. Alright, so I could just use that to continually keep making my things happen. Or I could just uh, normal summon... Uh, using a continuous spell or trap, so I could do this, and then this effect will activate, popping the set card because I don't know what it is. So I'd rather do that. So we'll pop this. It's ancient gear gadget. And now I get to use this to shuffle these three cards back into my deck. And wow, look at this! Look at this nonsense that I'm doing, right? I mean, look at it. It's just this game is taking way too long, and I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Uh, but, I mean, hey, life finds a way, and life carries on, right? But the thing is that I've got skill drain up, so unless he out skill drain, I'm not afraid of anything, because if he puts a huge monster on the board, I can answer the biggest monster he can summon. He can summon Ultimate Gear Gadgetron Dragon, and I can just make Neo Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon, <clears throat> and I can just kill it. That's all I have to do. I can just kill it. I can just bump heads, and then all my cards were free, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, is 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 this not clear yet? Like how much I'm just not having fun? Um, like it's just it's it's uh 
It's just, it's not something I'm enjoying. It's not something I'm enjoying by any stretch. And I'm going to keep reiterating this multiple times. Um, is that I just feel like this deck is better suited as being a supporting engine for literally everything. Like, the thing is, is that, like, Konami, it seems like Konami finally printed a Dragon Ruler deck the right way. Because this is very clearly a spiritual successor to Dragon Rulers in terms of its design. <coughs> and it seems like they printed it the right way. It can function as its own deck, but it is better as support for other things. And, like, I think people just don't seem to understand that. But, uh, so we'll do this, and we will pop, we will pop this card, and that card will add, um, will add the trap. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's, it's so straightforward. It's so straightforward. It makes my head bleed. It makes my throat bleed. I just get to do this. Look at this, it's just skill drain plus big bodies. And the thing is you can't even say, oh, skill drain's an unsearchable card. You make skill drain, you summon VFD. <laughs> the entire purpose of your deck is to summon VFD and just keep doing this over and over again just on a little bit more of an aggressive basis. But anyway, I'm gonna pause my rant for now and go into the next game. It just does not seem fun to me at all. It doesn't. I'm, I'm not having the best of times. And I can feel my throat degrading from the rant that I'm going on here but got to do it because otherwise oh my god look at this awful hand <laughs> look at this terrible hand um, I'm gonna activate this and I'm going to I'm going to normal summon just so I have a body on the board now and then I'm gonna set this and pass my turn <laughs> Oh boy! Yeah, I just I feel like the hybrids are better suited because the hybrids have higher ceilings, thus because of the inherent fact that they are hybrids, and they just do more. Like they just have uh, they just have better like, accessibility into certain cards, and that's something I like. I really like that. But like with this pure build, nah, 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 nah. nah, nah. <laughs> That's literally what we've uh, what we've degraded to is just making noises. Um, no, I do not want to add it to my hand. I'll put it here. We'll do it here. Uh, just because there's really no point in me having it in my hand. If I draw the field spell, I could pop it. I could have popped it from field anyway. The only reason putting it in my hand is relevant is if I like try to play around something like Castell. But that's really not something I'm too worried about here because I've got a Vanity's Emptiness. Well, I mean, I guess it. I guess it was correct to put it in my hand because if I flipped the Emptiness and then he has something like a Twin Twister. You could Twin Twister this, and this, and then I lose out. What is that? Why did his hand just shuffle? Did he just like reveal a Blue Eyes to me and I completely missed it? Are we playing against Blue Eyes? What are we playing against? Come on, man. You gotta tell me. You gotta let me know. What is this? Oh my god, we are playing against Blue Eyes. Um, <coughs> against... Ritual blue eyes, no less. I'm gonna go ahead and activate this just because I feel like this is necessary. I don't want to get caught with an alternative dragon, get caught with my pants down. Um, yeah, Sage, alright. <laughs> Sage, Dimension Barrier is a live card at some point, but oh my god, what's gonna happen now? Like Fabled Cat Sith? Oh, Fang Veiler. Searching Veiler does nothing here. Cool. Cool beans! <clears throat> I'm okay with this. I wish that this guy could search the field spell. If this guy could search the field spell, then it would be so inherently better in terms of the deck, and it would probably be really good in its pure form. This guy would be an instant three of, and uh, and a lot of consistency problems would be solved. But as it stands, nah. <laughs> as it stands, nah. That is my official response. But he's doing all this stuff, which makes me think he might have a twin twister, or he's just trying to circulate. He's just trying to circulate. I understand the feels completely, uh, but so I could normal summon this by sending emptiness to grave, uh, which is the neat thing is that you could just continually do that. Uh, but as it stands, why try to ruin a good thing, huh? We'll just attack with this, and uh, and we'll deal 24. Because then, from here, he has the out the emptiness. I'm playing again. I'm just using a, a cheesy floodgate. And I'm using it to make my opponent play on my pace. 
Yeah, I probably wasn't going to win this game without emptiness. And if this emptiness doesn't stick, then I am 100% probably not winning this game. Alright, so from here, let's see. This is the Water True King, which is not something that's going to be good for me. But we will use this and we'll just punch for 24. Come on, man. We just got to do it. You just punch for 24 and you make them cry. Um, like, this is, this is how this works. Next turn, I'll probably tribute summon for this, tributing my emptiness, and uh, and then um, yeah, and then that'd be pretty cool. Um, I could tribute this, but then the emptiness would go anyway. So like, there's no point. Might as well, right? Might as well not. He set a card. Poor bastard. Well, at this point, ah, Dragonic Diagram. You do not say. So what this means is that now what I can do is I can. Uh, I can use this, I can pop emptiness, I can search the trap, set the trap, tribute the trap for this, pop the monster, and then just attack for game. That's that's the sad thing. He doesn't have anything in grave that would be summonable off like Silver Scry. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. That's 100 percent what's about to happen here. Is that uh, is that I'm gonna activate this, pop an emptiness, and then I'm gonna get the trap, set the trap, tribute trap for this guy. And then Drake of Succession will let me draw a card. Very key. Very important. Uh, normal summon by using Continuous Spell or Trap. So we'll set this. Uh, this effect will activate. Pop in this. So this will probably be like something like a White Stone. Or maybe even the Veiler that he searched. Oh, it's another Sage. Alright. <coughs> well, I can draw cards here, but he surrendered. So, not really anything I'm worried about. But I'm just going to jump into this next game so that I can make this a clean three videos. That was absolutely ridiculous. There was literally no reason for me to win that game other than the fact that I just had an emptiness up. I flipped it and he didn't have an out. Like that's uh, sad times calls for sad measures. But uh, what I have here is I have a Maxi and I'm going second. Very cool, very neat. I do really like Maxi in this deck because it is a hand trap and like every hand trap kind of falls under the same uh, parameter of where you have it in your hand. Oh look, Metal Foes Yang Zings. <laughs> Guess who's getting maxied? <laughs> oh my god. Um, so, you're setting what? Combination, yeah. And so I'm gonna hold this maxi, right? Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maxi on the Jiaotu. Because if you maxi on the Jiaotu, it forces them to give you more cards. Um, because, I mean, I could maxi here, and he'd get one in past turn, and I'd get one card in past turn, but at this point, he has to resolve the Jiaotu because he's summoning it, right? And so at this point, he's given away two cards into the Jiaotu, and so he's going to summon two cards from deck. And I believe I get to draw two off of it as well because they get summoned at separate times. I could be wrong, um, but I believe I get to summon twice, or I get to draw twice. And then he just, he already ditched a path, so that's going to suck for him. Okay, so I just draw once. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's another card that operates like this. Oh, it's, um, it's, uh, Magician's Navigation. That's what it was. As Magician's Navigation lets you, um, lets you draw once for when the Dark Magician hits the board, and then once when the Dark Magician hits the deck, uh, boardroom deck. Um, like, it, because of the way it's structured, it's two separate actions. Uh, but he searched nine branches, he's got a counter and another card, and so, yeah, he had the synchro with those cards, or else he was going to, uh, or else he was just going to lose. Like, that's just how it operates. Um, and so it gave me an extra card. So because of that, like, it's, it's, it's better than the alternative, even though he does have nine branches here, and he's going to be able to nine branches on the Denglong, um, and summon, uh, Bian from deck, and then, uh, float into Chiwen. Because of this, uh, he does have two negations, so it does put me back down at five cards, but at this point he cycled out a ton of cards out of his hand. So he doesn't have capability of comboing off on an early potential, for the remainder of this game. So that's uh, that's the key thing. <clears throat> that is the very key important thing here. But so what I'm going to do here is that he's got double Metal Foes counter. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and activate this first. And I'm going to tribute it to summon my Ignis Heat. All right? If he doesn't negate it. Um, because if I do this, then I can just freely uh, pop a card. Um, I can just pop. I can just attempt to pop the nine branches, 
and it won't uh, really do anything. That's the thing, is that it won't, it'll, it'll diffuse the threat, um, is what I'm looking to do. So I'll pop this. I don't care about counter, because if I popped either of them, the other ones would trigger. I can out his counters um, through my own methods. Um, and he didn't even chain it, so like, it's, there's, there's like no point for him too. So now he actually has zero negations. Um, that's that's the important thing here is that he has zero negations now because he could have used nine branches on Dinglong and then like sure it doesn't negate anything that isn't already happened that hasn't already happened but he could still um, he could still just uh, just you know float into Bian Chiwen onto a herald which I have to answer um, but and like that would be actually really strong here because I have to pop the true kings out of my hand in order to summon them. Which means I would be banishing a lot of cards, but as it stands now, nah, man, it's uh, it's it's ogre, it's it's ogre, man. There's there's nothing else that's gonna happen for you. Um, but so I can pop uh, Mirajane, I can uh, use it to just do these car, get rid of these cards on board. This is just, ooh, this is unfair. Uh, but yeah, so we'll activate this, and I will use it to pop. Um, do I have any monsters in grave? Nah, just the max C. So I'll use this to pop the uh, Miramune, and I'll add Revival of the True King to my hand, and then Miramune's effect will activate, allowing me to add uh, the probably the Water Little Guy, or the Earth Little Guy is probably going to be better, <clears throat> just because I can do that. I could add the uh, Earth Little Guy, and that would uh, that would prevent some targeting things, but this would also let me get access to the trap again. I think it's just better overall. I think uh, Dreyas uh, the Third, <laughs> as his name seems to be, <clears throat> seems just to be a little bit uh, inherently stronger than uh, what we're looking for here. But so what we'll do is we'll do this, and uh, I have already normal summoned. So what I can do is I can activate True Drake of Succession here. I can use this to gain an additional normal summon, uh, an additional tribute summon rather, um, and I'll use it. Uh, to uh, send my trap to grave and so this will trigger and what I will do with it is I will um, I could pop either ding long or something the thing is I've got to deal with the floaters um, that's the biggest issue is I've got to deal with multiple floaters so I'll just get rid of that I'm not too worried about that he can establish a scale next turn with the counters uh, but that's fine I'm not too worried about that is in a hole um, in the whole sense but uh, I can summon this, popping these, uh, and that would be fine. I could pop this and pop this, and that would summon two from deck. Yep. So we'll do that. I think Neo Tachyon uh, Dragon is probably my goal here in terms of what I'm trying to do. At least I think. Um, True King Agnemaz, the Vanisher's effect. Yeah. I believe I would like to use that there effect there, sir. Um, but so what we'll use, we'll use that to add this back to hand, and then its effect will trigger, the, the earth little guy's effect will trigger, and I'll summon uh, the water one from the deck, which will let me use the field spell to pop it, um, and I can actually, I can, I've already sent three, so I can draw three cards, um, so that's, that's just cool, I guess, and there's another water one, so neat, neat O. Neat O was his name O. Um, so that actually just gets me right where I need to be in terms of uh, the cards I'm trying to access. Uh, so we'll use this. And we'll use this to pop the water guy from my hand to add the trap. And from here, the water dude's effect will trigger. And I will be able to summon um, another guy from the deck. So I'll summon something that doesn't really matter. And what, like I said, what I can do is I can go into uh, I can go into this and let's see. Negate the effects of all fate. Your opponent can activate cards or effects on the field. So that's actually not what I'm looking to do. Um, but I can go into Pain Gainer um, and let's see. It would destroy his board, yes. Or I could just start banishing things. Um, this is a problem. I did not think this entirely through until. It was too late. Um, but so we'll we'll summon these into this, and I will set multiple cards, and I will end my turn. <laughs> and 
it's it's not necessarily too problematic um, having to do the things that I'm doing because of the fact that I have skill drain and VFD. So it's not it's not an issue really. I'll just call fire um, just so that, like things can't trigger and things can't do stuff. Um, and then this will have its way with everything. And this uh, this ding long can like synchro here, but it's not gonna do anything. So basically, I'm just trying to I'm gonna have to exhaust his floaters at some point. I'm I'm trying to think of how I'm gonna deal with his floaters because I, it was like in my head I was like, yeah, man, I can just like do a bunch of different shit. But it turns out, no, I can't. <laughs> so I think what I have to do is uh, I could make pain gainer. Yeah, summon the mister, but it's, its effect is negated because of uh, VFD, so that's cool. Um, this allows me to activate the uh, the Pot of Avarice straight from my deck, so that's cool. I'm just out advantaging him really hard at this point. Like I don't even—the thing is, I don't have to win the game. Um, at this point, I don't have to win the game per se. I just have to out resource him, and to the point where it forces him to use his floaters for suboptimal gains. And that is what's going on here. That's the thing. Is that, uh, is that yeah, he's going to summon this. He's going to make a Boxia, probably. But, like, from there, it's not going to do anything. <laughs> its effect is going to be negated. Because it's going to be a fire when it hits the board. It's not going to be able to do anything. Because of the fact that this is already active before he summons the Boxia. So, even if he was going to use something... Uh, is there one that makes it unaffected by monster effects? One of the small ones? Can't remember. I think there might be. I remember, let's see, Pulau makes it unaffected by spell effects, Bixie is traps, and Bian is battle, and Swanee is fire, is uh, battle, uh, or attack and defense boost, Tauti is it can't change control, yeah, there's like none, there's none that make it unaffected by monster effects, so uh, this Boxia isn't going to be able to do shit, uh, he's got double counter engrave, which he can use to add back, like, the stealing, and, uh, or he can add back. He can actually add back Volflame and Steelin, just so that he could use uh, he could use Volflame to get popped by the Silver and stuff like that. But yeah, like he just realized that he literally just gave up his Floater String, and all I have to do is next turn is just kill him. Like this, it's so simple. He all I had to do was literally just not die, which is very easy for me to do, and I can out resource his entire deck, even though his deck is mainly comprised of floaters, and that's just. Uh, that's just another one of the problems I have with the Yang Zing deck is that when people make you uh, make you play on their pace and not your own, then uh, then you start s seeing some problems with the deck. But anyway, I'm going to call it here. Uh, I think that was a pretty decent three games, even though it was against randoms, and I think it pretty much exemplified the point that I was trying to make of I'm not a huge fan of this pure True King variant. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and all that sorts of nonsense but anyway as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below as i already said and if you like this video definitely be sure to like and if you're new here maybe consider subscribing it helps me out a ton it helps the channel and community within it grow so that's a cool thing if you want to see more content from me that's the best way to support is by liking the videos and subscribing if you haven't already but other than that check out the links on screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might also like there's a thousand plus uploads over there so if you can't find another video you also like i'd be incredibly surprised but as I've already said, thank you for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. And as always, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.